Hey family, what's going on? Klaus here and welcome back to Surviving with Mechanism where today guys I'm gonna be building a mega structure down here in the basement now It is a mega structure because it's the largest size that you can make of a particular structure and today We're gonna be building the industrial turbine again um, I know you guys have seen that before you guys have seen me expand mine before so I'm not gonna drag that out I'll make a quick time-lapse type video for that or like type clip for that but there's a really distinct purpose and distinct reason for why I want to do that. And that's because, and if I uh, if I come over here, I should probably slow down my power suit right now. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, I maxed out my nutritional paste in my uh, mecha suit. So now I'm able to hold 100, technically my maximum is 128,000 megabuck, millibuckets of food, which is a crazy amount of food. So yeah, also, you know what, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to grab my pants and slow myself down. And I think also I've got my... Uh, my step assist turned way high, which is cool, but can be kind of annoying anyway So I want to make a bigger turbine because it is most clearly my biggest limiting factor Whenever it comes to making antimatter now there are four specific things that I want to make with antimatter including a Gravitational modulating unit from a mecha suit this allows me to teleport or um, I'm sorry This allows me to uh, have creative flying then I also want to make the teleportation unit, which allows me to teleport through my mecha tool, I guess. I want to make the supermassive QIO drive, which gives me 16 billion, um, what is it, storage capacity, I guess, for my QIO system. Right now I've got 4 million, so 16 billion would be insane. And then I also want to make the anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer, which is just a cool in-game item for converting certain items into different items using antimatter. And so if you add up all of these, we have two with that, three, six, and nine. I need a grand total of nine of these antimatter pellets. Now, if you look over here, I've got three plus one that's in my QIO system. So I have a grand total of four. That means that I'm halfway there. The problem is at this current speed and at this current rate, each antimatter pellet takes four hours to make, and that's at a burn rate of 32. So um, I don't want to wait another 16 to 20 hours for this. Uh, this is AFK time, but I do not AFK overnight because there's radioactive material running around and expensive equipment and stuff. So I do not want to, to run the risk of anything happening. So I always babysit the computer. I do not AFK overnight or anything like that. And so that means that I need to just speed up the process quite a bit. And so that's what we're going to do down here. We're going to put in the largest size industrial turbine. And again, I won't show you guys the whole thing. I mean, I'll, I, again, I'll speed up the, the clip and stuff. But um, just a little quick description and explanation. Um, the biggest multi-block structure in mechanism can make meet a, uh, a maximum size of 18 by 18 by 18 blocks. That's length, width, and height. But with the industrial turbine specifically, it has to be an odd number of length and width because there has to be a middle block and that's where your rotor goes. That's the thing that spins. It has to be in the middle. So obviously there's no middle block with an 18 by 18 structure, but there is a middle block with a 17 by 17. And so this is a 17 by 17 inch, uh, or I'm sorry, not inch, 17 by 17 block square. It goes down 10 blocks and then up to that line there that's another eight, so it's exactly 18 blocks tall, plus it still gives me the opportunity, the ability to uh, to walk around on top of it from up here. And by the way, I did move my, uh, my uh, uh, what is this thing called again? Teleport pad, whatever, uh, so that now it, whenever I come out, I'm actually coming out straight. So, um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing today, guys. I've got all of the numbers and all the math. I did it, double checked it to make sure I've got enough stuff. So if I come into my this is this is turned into my automation area. Um, I actually have automated the crafting of a lot of things, including the if you look at the um, the gravitational modulating unit, the ultimate induction provider. I've actually got I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the one that's making ultimate induction providers. Now I have six of them now, uh, but that's going to definitely come in handy whenever we decide to in expand my induction matrix. But I've also automated the ultimate uh, energy cube and every single level of that. And of course, with the automation of the ultimate induction cells, it also I also have the elite induction, I'm sorry, induction provider, the advanced induction provider, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got all that automated, as well as the parts and pieces that I needed for this turbine. So let's get to the turbine now, and then I'm gonna start building. 
Um, this video will actually probably be like a long recording session, but it probably will be a short video because I'm going to literally like speed through all the building. But um, first things first, I've got nothing in my actual inventory because I have everything in my QIO dashboard. So first things first, turbine casings. Okay, I'm gonna put those back so you guys can see the total number um, for making the maximum size of a turbine of an industrial turbine, you will need to make exactly 1,111 turbine casings. Now, some of them get converted into other things, and uh, that includes um, 690 of these turbine casings will be turned into vents so that will lead you to half of that number, so 345 vents, and then also you'll need to make two valves. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out six stacks of these right now, because we need to do a little bit of crafting, okay? So, um, the other thing that I need includes the, I'm gonna go ahead and just make these, uh, these vents, which means I need to get the, um, the iron bars out of my inventory here. But let's make, I think it is five stacks of these things. So if I shift click it, I think it's gonna give me two stacks of piece, but I need um, exactly five stacks plus 25. So I guess because you make an even number of them, um, I'm gonna have five stacks plus 26. So that's okay, shift click and place. And there we go, so I've got three vents. I did not grab enough of the uh, casings because I got confused in the math, which is totally fine. I'm gonna need all of this out of my inventory eventually, but uh, right now I'm just trying to get enough vents. So exactly 345 vents are how many we're gonna need. So let's go ahead and shift click this once again. And uh, I'm just gonna do this manually because I don't wanna over make items. And again, I need five full stacks plus 25. So there is our fifth stack. And then uh, can I shift click this once again? Yeah, so I need 25. And again, it has to be even. So we're gonna have 26. So that is the grand total number of vents that you have to have to make this work. Now the next step, the next part of it is the valves because you have to use the, you know, you have to use the, uh, the casings for the valves and it's really easy four so you need uh you only need two valves by the way um just to double ch just to confirm what you guys know uh water goes from the fission reactor to the turbine or, i'm sorry a steam goes from the fission reactor to the turbine and then water comes back so you only need two valves but um the water comes out of the uh turbine not from a valve but from the vents but the other valve is used for extracting the power so you know that's important so let me grab i think it was those was it the red squares i think it's the red squares Make a few of these valves. There we have it. And I've got a few extra turbine casings. Um, I might have miscalculated a little bit. Um, you know, it was a lot. It was a it was a lot to think about. Um, okay, so next step, we're going to make the or we're going to investigate all the other parts. Okay. So the next part that I'm going to look into is the pressure disperser. Remember, right above, you know what? I'm not going to explain it all. You guys have seen it before, but the pressure disperser has to be right next to the rotational complex. That's what spins the rotor. And I need exactly 224, which is how many I have there. Then I also need 218 of the saturating condensers, which is here. And that goes next to the electromagnetic coils which goes directly above the rotational complex, and that's what creates the power. So I need to make those coils. I haven't made them yet. And then we also need 838 structural glass. Now, I had some, so I ended up with 841, but 838 exact numbers. So the things that we need to craft right now include the rotational complex, which, you know, I've got all the parts up here. So I'm going to grab some steel. Uh, where's my steel? Am I out of steel? Or am I just... Not oh there we go it's exactly two thousand it's kind of hard to see that um, steel infused alloy and forgot what else I needed for this um, rotational complex uh, oh the the red squares okay well I have those awesome so I need one of these this is obviously going to stay that's that's the very top that's the thing that spins your rotor so moving on we're going to uh, make fourteen rotors and this is very simple math here um, I don't have enough steel or Maybe I don't have enough of the uh, infused alloy. Let's go ahead and just grab plenty. Um, so remember, it's an 18 block structure from height. You have a, a bottom and a top. So it's that's 16. Plus you have the two um, levels with vents. You subtract two more from that. So you have 14. So you need 14 of these rotors. Unfortunately, they do stack. So that's awesome. And then I need to make the blades, which um, you make uh, double 
of the amount of blades as you have rotors. So I need 28. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more steel. Actually, I'm going to grab a lot more steel and I'm going to grab a lot more infused alloy. All right. So 28 of these. And again, fortunately, they do stack. So that is a blessing. Okay. And then the last thing I need to, to make, and hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. I don't think I am, is the electromagnetic coil which requires and i'm gonna need you, what you do is you take the number of blades you have you divide it by four so you have 28 divide that by four you end up with seven so i actually need exactly seven of these electromagnetic coils which means i need seven of the energy tablets so what oh okay <laughs> it, it moved that was really weird but yeah so i need exactly seven of these energy tablets and then uh i can uh Finish the crafting portion of this video off. Oh, I got to get some gold too. My bad. Okay. So I can't shift click, obviously, but I think they do stack. So that's nice. Okay. There we go. All right, so uh, I'm gonna put away the uh, the material here. I've got lots of stuff that's gonna be in the QIO dashboard that I'll be reaching in and grabbing as I build. But once again, just to recap, you need 1,111 casings. That's for casings, but also to make a few things, including your vents, which you need 345 and two valves. You also need one rotational complex, which is here. You need uh, 224 pressure dispersers. You need 14 rotors and 28 blades, seven electromagnetic coils, and then 218 saturated condensers and 838 structural glass. So guys, now I'm gonna run downstairs and we're gonna start building. But first I'm gonna turn this off because I'm gonna be down there for a long time. I don't like it running while it's dark. So guys, uh, I'll, uh, I'll cut the face cam and I'm gonna get to work. Enjoy the music.
All right, guys, um, that took me about 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30, I don't know. Uh, but here we go, we have our industrial turbine. The only thing I need to do is include the valves, but it will work right now to let me look at some things. So, uh, pretty awesome. So the maximum water output is 6,000, uh, whoa, 6.976 million millibuckets. The max flow is actually lower than the output, which is crazy. So that means that that is our limiting factor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write it down because we're going to have to use this number to do a little bit of math. All right. So with that number, um, we're going to figure out now how big of a fission reactor we need to build. So 5,520,000. Okay. I've got it right there. Just double confirm. Yep. That's the same number. Um, and I'm going to divide that by 20. Thousand because twenty thousand is how much of a uh, the the number increases whenever you are burning fish, fissile fuel. So the number is two hundred and seventy six. That's how much fissile fuel we're going to be able to burn um, every single tick, which is crazy. So two hundred and seventy six. Remember, ours at the top is uh, like up, upstairs is thirty two. So this is a huge improvement on on that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate if i were to let's say uh build a an induction not an induction a uh what am i thinking a fission reactor way over here and let's just say i'm gonna build it inside of this room i'm not gonna dig into the wall or anything uh and i'm gonna go out 18 by 18 so let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18. Wow, this is a big machine. Okay, and uh, so we're gonna go uh, out. Actually, this should be, that should be 17. So if I just go out one from this, that should be it. Right there, that's 18, there we go. All right, and then all the way over to here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out how many uh, fissile fuel is going to be on one level. Now it's super, super simple to calculate this guys. Um, all you do is you take the 18 by 18. Okay. But you know that you're not gonna be able to put fissile fuel on the outside ring. So it's actually 16 by 16. So if you multiply those two together, you get 256. And then if you divide that by two, you get 128. So technically I can, cause you do a checkerboard pattern. Um, and unless my estimations are off, I don't think that they are because you do put a fissile a fuel assembly in every single or every other block. Um, you're actually able to uh, put 128 of these babies on a per level. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. 128 per level. And I need 276, which means 276 divided by 128 is, is actually not going to work because that uh, doesn't divide very evenly at all. It's not very close. So what I would like to do instead, and of course I've got this stupid thing in my way, I would love it if I could move that. Uh, I, I might end up moving it because this new setup is going to be significantly better than the old setup. And it's not even running. Look at that. It's completely worthless. Um, okay, so what if we were to do uh, something a little bit smaller? What if we were to make it to where it'll, it'll, it'll come up to here? So... I'm going to stick in the corner. So how big is this? This is this was 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. This is 13. Okay. Maybe uh maybe 13's better. Let's let's just look. Well, I've got to count out, don't I? Um 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13. Okay. Um and what I like about that also is that it allows me to get to my um the drop off to the uh, the waste down there in case I ever have to go down there. So, um, yeah, right there, right there, boom, boom, boom. And this allows me to go as high as I need to without having to worry. All right, so if this is 13 by 13, that means it's 11 by 11 because you subtract two since you have an outside ring. And then that's 121, divide that by two, and I can technically get 60 fuel rod assemblies on each level. I technically have how many levels before having to destroy stuff? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, but the top and the bottom don't count. So I got five. So 60 multiplied by five is 302. That's actually perfect. Well, it's close to perfect. So, um, guys, what I'm going to do is I am now going to go through the motions and I'll show you guys the whole thing, but I'm not going to talk you through it because you have seen this before uh, building a fusion reactor that is literally, I'm going to write this down 13 by 13 
okay? Um, by seven, right? Because we did um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is from the, uh, from the floor to the ceiling and 13 by 13 wide. And I'm gonna fill it up with fusion, uh, fusion, it, uh, okay, come on. It's, it's called a fuel assembly. So we're gonna fill it up with a whole bunch of these babies. And we're also gonna fill it up with uh, however many columns I end up with, with the uh, controllers. Control, what's it called? Control rod assemblies, there you go. And then the rest of it has to be the fission reactor casing, which is going to be here. And uh, we're gonna have, a, have to have a few ports and also reactor glass, which is not cheap to make. So reactor, actually, Actually, wait a minute. I think that the the glass is actually structural glass. That thing's turned off upstairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and destroy it and look and see what I end up with in my inventory. Oh, it's a reactor glass blast. That's gonna be like the worst part is making all that. So actually, let's go through the motions of calculating it right now. I mean, why not? So the top and the bottom need to be solid, or, or like they, they can be solid. So 13 th times 13 times two. This is the the initial calculation. So 13 times 13 times two, that's 338, plus uh, the columns uh, along the edges. So we've already get done the top and the bottom, so that's five times four, so that's 20. So plus 20 equals 358, plus we're gonna have to have some valves, right? How many valves do we need in a fission reactor? I think it's just two, but I'm gonna confirm here. So we have, oh no, it's four, so we have the, the uh, fuel in and the radioactivity out and then the coolant in and the coolant out so we need four of the uh of the valves which mean or ports which means i need eight more of these reactor casings plus eight equals uh 366 to end up with uh two of the ports and then the last thing really is how many of the reactor glass do i need because i think i can get pretty close Oh, it's just enriched iron. Okay, for some reason I was thinking it needed a polonium. I'm glad. Um, okay, so how many of the reactor glass? So let's just think about this for a second. If it's 13 by 13, then that means that it is an 11 by 11 square. Well, that's an 11 in uh, in depth. And the height is going to be 5. So 11 times 5 is 55. Multiply that by 4, because there are 4 sides. And um, that's going to be 220 reactor glass minus the i'm sorry not to i wrote down two ports we actually have four ports so since we're going to be putting ports where glass would be we actually only need 216 reactor glass cool so i've got everything i need here guys um i'm going to uh, begin crafting and i'll bring you along with me
Bleh. Okay, so <laughs> I've been filming for an hour and a half now. Um, the coolant tank is pretty large, as you can see, and I've got the, uh, you know, quantum entangle porter filling this baby up. It's going to take a long time to fill this up. And by the way, just to just to discuss it, um, I, apparently my mathematics were off a bit, and some of you guys probably predicted it. I had to go up one, which was a major... Uh, a major issue, and also I overmade on fission fuel assemblies, probably because I had to utilize the formulaic assemblicators, because all of those tanks that I would have had to make, remember, you, you saw it, I had to make 305 of these um, basic tanks, and why are you still making tanks? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh! Oh my! Oh my, oh my. Uh, yeah, did I... Okay, I forgot to put this on inverted mode, and it, it's it made 457 vision fuel assemblies. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, you know, I guess it doesn't hurt, but it's it's terrible. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, anyway, that that's a big mistake. Don't do that in, on your own basis. But yeah, so because these um, tanks don't stack that this formulaic assemblicator was making, I decided to implement the uh, the use of the formulaic assemblicator to, to make those because I knew that the fuel assemblies did stack, which made it way, way easier. Otherwise, I would have had to, you know, herpy dirt back and forth over and over again with my uh, inventory, which would have been awful. So anyway, um, guys, we got that built up and now it is filling up with water. So I do have a plan for what to do while this actually fills up and it's going to take a very long time. The first thing I want to look at, though, is this heat capacity, 626,000. Uh, joules per Kelvin. I'm just curious to see what this thing says for that. 172,000. Okay, so it, it's not a big deal because if I activate this thing, then um, you'll see that we are burning at a uh, much higher rate. 640,000 is the actual rate that we're burning. So the heating rate is, uh, you know, heat capacity is different than heating rate. So we're good there. So this thing is running and um, we are, we're good to go there. So I would like to wire this thing up. I don't need all this to be running right now um, while it's filling up, but also we're going to go take on the, the wither. Um, so let's do that first because you guys have been watching a lot of building. I think it's time to show you guys what I've been up to. So first things first, uh, I want to show you guys how I found a fortress.